So what we will do is in order to identify these services which were running on all these open ports which we just discovered, we will go ahead and use the minus a option. So we say nmap minus a and then give the victim. So sometimes just the operating system fingerprint scan might not tell us what OS it is running. But looking at some of the service specific banners, we might be able to find out the operating system. So we might say nmap minus a 192.168.0.112 in which case what it will do is it will go ahead find out the open ports, find out the services which are running on those ports and then also try to guess the operating system. right? One small thing which we can do is we can tell nmap as to how fast it should conduct the scan by using the minus t option. Now to this we can feed any value between 1 to 5. So you know the higher value you feed in the more faster nmap goes ahead and sends out its scan. So let's use 5 and then let's allow it to run. So now we are doing both the service fingerprinting as well as the operating system fingerprinting. right? So while this is running on this terminal, let's go ahead and look at some of the other features which nmap allows us. You can look at the man page as well but the minus h is a good synopsis of what is out there. So the first thing which we notice is nmap has a couple of host discovery techniques and that is if a particular computer is up or not and for which it can use a lot of scans. So you can just go ahead use the ping scan and send out pings to the computer to find out whether it's up or not. Else you can use a SYNAC, TCP SYNAC or UDP based discovery technique. So let's quickly just use the ping scan, right? So you can actually say, if you notice the parameter is minus SP, right? This is for the ping scan. And then once again our victim, right? Here we could alternatively mention a range, let's say something like this, right? Also, so let's go ahead. And as you can see, it says it is up and goes ahead and finds out the MAC address. So let's come back here quickly and into our previous window where we were running the OS as well as service fingerprinting scan. So now if you notice previously when we had just tried to do a port scanning, we found out the ports which are open and the services which are running but we were not able to find out the version of the services. But right now you can see that let's say HTTP, it's found out that it's an Apache daemon and version is 2.2.4 and something which is running Win32, right? The Win32 version of Apache. Also, we found the Microsoft Windows RPC, so on and so forth. So in the previous case, when we just ran with the minus O option to find out the OS, it was not able to find out the operating system. But now with the version based scanning of the services, it's able to decipher it, right? And as you can see, it is giving us some sort of a guess of what operating system it is running. Isn't it? So Microsoft Windows XP SP2 firewall disabled and actually you know, this is the victim 192.168.0.112 is running XP SP2. So it's actually provided us a very good guess of what the remote OS is. Now, how is this information useful? Now think about it from a vulnerability assessment perspective. A person has to go ahead and he's given like a black box test and he has to find out what a remote computer is running and how to compromise it. In which case he'll first go ahead, find out the open ports, then find out the services running on those ports and then the version of the service, right? Then he might go ahead and find some vulnerabilities which might exist for that service version. Now Apache has both a Linux flavor and a Windows flavor and has many versions and the vulnerability which is available might only apply to a particular version. So at that time finding the operating system as well as the version of Apache is of utmost importance, right? So with this, we know that let's say somebody has come up with a, you know, exploit for Apache Windows version 2.2.4, then we absolutely know that we can go ahead and check if this remote computer is vulnerable to that attack or not. And if it is vulnerable, we will advise the administrator to patch it, right? So now coming back to what other scanning techniques are possible, right? So as you see, 
when we do the port scanning, we have a lot of choices. So we can go ahead do the TCP SYN scan, a connect scan, AX scan, so on and so forth. Or you know you can even do the null, Xmas, fin scan, etc. So if you actually do a man and map, you find a very good explanation of what these individual scans mean. Right, you have to scroll down a little. And here all these scans and what they mean, everything is properly listed. It has a very good documentation. So let's just come to the scanning part. So port scanning basics, right? Here, what is important to understand is that, you know, these scan types, TCP SYN scan. So we can go ahead and figure out what is. So simply put, for example, a TCP SYN scan is just going to send out SYN packets and going to check if whether it's getting a SYNAC or a reset from the destination computer. If it gets a SYNAC, that means the port is open. If it gets a reset, that means the port is closed. If it does not get anything, there might be some sort of a filtering which is there on the port. Maybe there is a firewall which is running, which is going ahead and discarding the scan packets. So as a simple example, let's go ahead and run the previous version with a SYN scan, right? So with this, we are able to once again enumerate the network sorry, the remote computer. So why use different scanning techniques? Now the point to understand is that some of these scanning techniques are very stealthy and cannot be logged by various firewalls. For example, at one time it was very tough to find out a SYN scan which might be occurring because the three-way TCP handshake is never completed, right? Then the ACK based scan came in, you know, where you can also find out by just sending an ACK packet whether a port is closed or not, so on and so forth. So it's just up to you which scanning technique you want to use. Uh, let's say you use a connect scan in which the whole TCP three-way handshake is finished and if it succeeds then we say the port is open else closed. So that is a very noisy way of doing it, right? Because you're actually connecting to the service and then disconnecting saying that okay I found out the port is open so let me go ahead. So using which scanning technique is totally up to you. If you want too much of stealth then you can use that. Also Nmap allows for obfuscation of the source IP addresses as well, right? So you might want to check out the man page. So once again, giving you a brief synopsis, basically Nmap helps us in finding out what a remote network looks like, right? So the first thing is if I tell you, uh, you know, xyz.com, you know, how would you find out about it? So maybe you want to run an Nmap scan on one of the computers which xyz.com is hosting. Right? Maybe it's web server. Then find out the web services which are running over there, HTTP, you know, which version of Apache, what is the operating system, so on and so forth. So we are actually building upon our knowledge by using these, right? In some other tutorial, we'll also look at how to use some of these DNS utilities in order to find more about a remote computer. So with this, I come to the end of the Nmap tutorial, right? Try out some of these techniques. Look at the man page. It has a million options. And it is one of the coolest tools ever written in the security domain. Right? Hope this was useful. Thank you.